Hello, everybody. Happy Thursday. My name is Darlene Merkler, and I'm here on Facebook Live every Tuesday and Thursday at noon with 15-minute tips for family caregivers. On Tuesday, we talked about, we started talking about the caregiver journey, and I want to continue that conversation today. And just as a review, uh, we were talking about the six different stages of being a caregiver. And on Tuesday, we talked about the first three stages, and today we're going to talk about the last three. But just as review, the first three are, uh, the first one is the expectant caregiver. That's when you're anticipating that pretty soon you're going to be a caregiver. And then the second stage is the freshman caregiver which you just started taking care of a family member on a regular basis. I'm sure uh, lots of caregivers are at all different stages. Ideally, it would be great to anticipate being a caregiver, but as I said on Tuesday, I don't, in my 30 years uh, of working in senior healthcare, I don't think I've ever had somebody contact me and say, I think in the next couple of years, I'm gonna be taking care of my parents, you know? But that would be the ideal situation. The freshman caregiver, I know we have a lot at Inland Caregiver Resource Center, a lot of clients are just starting to take care of their loved one. That would be the freshman, and we gave some tips on that. Also, the entrenched caregiver, which I think the majority of people that listen in here on Facebook Live or are clients of Inland Caregiver Resource Center are the entrenched caregiver, and that's when your involvement with your loved one is constant. So today we're going to talk about stage four, five, and six of caregiving. <clears throat> so stage four is the pragmatic caregiver. We have some of those too around uh, that I've talked to. There, um, you have taken the care receiver to the hospital, short-term rehabilitation center, and other forms of community services. So you're getting really entrenched into this caregiving role. And you may be a little pragmatic about it because you might be doubting professionals, like healthcare professionals, and you might have a calloused attitude at this point, uncaring because it just, you're actually on the verge of burnout. You, you're really just about had it with your caregiving responsibilities at this point of being the pragmatic caregiver. The challenge is to reflect on understanding yourself and the care receiver. The purpose is to gain a better understanding of yourself and the care receiver. You know, we, the caregiver and the care receiver, receiver change as time goes on and within our caregiving duties. So we want to be cognizant of that. The key word, as we talked about on Tuesday keywords, um, is for the pragmatic caregiver is welcome. Welcome the joy of your relationship. You know, my mom passed away, mm, let's see, probably 14 years ago. Uh, yeah, about 14 years ago. <clears throat> And I would do anything to have another conversation with her. I miss her very much. So even though your care receiver might get on your nerves some days, just be thankful that they're still here and that you have the privilege of taking care of them. So welcome the joys of your relationship. Welcome forgiveness. Boy, forgiveness is a big thing and um, in any relationships that we have. And also welcome shared activities. I know, especially right now with COVID, we're all stuck in the house and we're probably getting on each other's nerves. Um, so let's think of some new activities maybe that we can do together that might bring us some happiness. Even if it's just watching a, a funny movie or doing uh, some kind of an art project together. <clears throat> Number five is the transitioning caregiver. That's the stage five. That's the uh, when the loving and feeling good about the shared journey between the caregiver and the care receiver. The challenge is to let go of fear of the end. You'll move on from doing caregiving and focus on being a caregiver. Begin implementing end of life care. And we talked about that before 
This stage is about loving and feeling good about the shared journey. Not everybody has this stage because sometimes people don't transition. Sometimes the end happens very suddenly. So if you have this transitioning stage, it's very precious. And we can um, accomplish a lot in this transitioning stage. The mourning and grieving is part of the caregiver journey. Even when the person is still alive, we, we call that, um, we talk about that in our grief classes. So um, it's called anticipatory grief. So the person's still here, but we're grieving the, the loss of the person as we knew them. So that is a real uh, part of, of the caregiving process. The stage five is, or the word that we want to focus on is allow. Allow all the time to mourn and grieve. Take time away from your loved one, of course, to, to grieve the loss of who they were and the anticipating loss of their life coming, coming up. Allow remembrances to remain. You know, um, when I used to work in the Alzheimer's Assisted Living, I had, uh, we did a project where we made this little photo album and the caregivers, the family caregivers would come in and we would bring the pictures and we made these really nice little photo albums at, that they could share with their loved one. And uh, especially people with memory impairment love looking at old pictures and remembering the way things used to be. Remember, uh, allow remembrances to remain. So we want to you know, talk about the things that happened in their life and allow reflections of your, your own experiences. The last stage is the Godspeed caregiver. That's stage six. And that's the person who the caregiver may have your caregiving duties may have ended already. And what can you do that you're no longer a caregiver? The challenge is to integrate former role, the former role of caregiving into your new life. There are lots of skills that you probably learned as a caregiver that you could implement after you're not a caregiver anymore. The key word uh, for the Godspeed caregiver stage six is treasure. Treasure your dreams. Treasure the challenges which have led you to new opportunities and skills. Treasure the opportunity to, to share information. You can be a tremendous help to others who are going through what you've already gone through. And treasure the memories of the care receiver. So we want to do whatever we can to treasure those memories, save pictures. Uh, some people make little shrines, you know, to their loved one once they've passed and so forth. So what happens after caregiving? One thing is you want to stay connected. One of the things that I've always struggled with is, and I've worked in hospice care too, <clears throat> is when you lose a loved one, you're not allowed to join a grief support group until at least six months after the person has passed. And that always bothered me. I, and I understand the reasoning behind it because it takes about six months before you're able to be in a group setting and actually discuss the loss of your loved one because there's too many emotions involved immediately following the loss of a loved one. Well, um, I'm going to be able to tell you next week a little bit more, but Inland Caregiver Resource Center has a program called PEARLS. And as part of the PEARLS program, we are working with some hospice companies to fill in that gap. So in those first six months, we'll be able to help people with that grieving process before they're able to get into a grief support group. But we want to stay connected. I This morning, um, we had our Parkinson's support group meeting of course on Zoom and one of the ladies who attended has been in some of my classes very sweet lady and she just lost her husband in June that she would have been she had been taking care of him for quite some time and she showed up to the Parkinson's support group just to stay connected with the people that she had shared her experiences with when she was a caregiver 
and that's perfectly fine. We have 12 different family caregiver support groups and you're welcome to come to any of them, even if you're not a caregiver anymore. It's very comforting to be with people who have gone through and are still going through what you have gone through, even if you're not a caregiver anymore. But stay connected. This lady was telling us this morning that she attends one Zoom meeting a day. She has a church group that she attends and other groups, you know, senior centers are doing things online. You can tune in by Zoom and do dance classes and lectures and all kinds of things. So stay connected somehow. It's really hard to do that right now with COVID, but thank goodness for technology and we can do it uh, virtually. Stay informed. So connect to social media. You know, we just uploaded all of these 15 minute videos that I do on Facebook and I've been doing them since March, twice a week. We just uploaded all of them to YouTube. So you can go to YouTube, look for Inland Caregiver Resource Center, pick out the topic that is of interest to you, and then you can watch a little 15 minute video. But also I was telling someone this morning because we're gonna be having Dr. Shurzai speak at our Parkinson's support group next month. He and his wife, who he calls Team Shurzai, they do little small lectures on Instagram and they're fascinating. They have wonderful information and it's free. So social media is, is really amazing and we can get lots of good information and stay connected with people that way. Participate in, com in community college courses if, if you can. Of course, they're mostly virtual now, but at least it keeps our mind busy. We're never too old to learn new things. Apply the things that you learned in caregiving to whatever you might be doing next. And then consider a new professional field if you can, if, if you're returning to work. So I just want to review in conclusion the six stages that we talked about of caregiving, the expectant caregiver, the freshman caregiver, the entrenched caregiver, the pragmatic caregiver, the transitioning caregiver, and the Godspeed caregiver. So caregivers need to be informed of the risk of caregiving like burnout and compromised health, depression, and depletion of financial resources. And that's why Inland Caregiver Resource Center is here to help educate you about those things. So I hope that understanding the different stages of the caregiving journey has been helpful to you and that you can identify with one of those stages wherever you might be right now. I wanna conclude my presentation for today, but again, I wanna remind you that these presentations are on YouTube if you'd like to watch them that way. Uh, we also have four workshops this month the month of August uh, that you can register for on Zoom. We have some great topics coming up for that. We have 12 different family caregiver support groups. I run an evening support group the third Thursday evening of the month. And I think in September, we're gonna have two evening workshops. So we're trying to do more things in the evening because it seems like a lot of caregivers can get more help in the evening and can tune in to our workshops at that time. So practice self-care by educating yourself. Thank you for tuning in today and getting more education. That is self-care. And I hope that you'll take advantage of all the resources that we have. We can provide information and assistance, case management, counseling, workshops, education. We have so many services and they're all up and running and they're here for your taking. We have many different services that I, I can't even name all of them here on Facebook Live, but if you call into our office at 909-514-1404, we'll be happy to connect you with one of our social workers and they can let you know all the different services that we have. So thanks for tuning in today and have a wonderful day. I'll see you next week. Bye.